that you're not necessarily always using and you didn't build your following using other people's homes. You did it with your own space, which is it, which is an important point to make. A lot of people think, oh, they need to have all of these beautiful before and afters and all these clients and how are they going to build business? Do it in your own home, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Speak Organized podcast. I am your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, decluttering expert, ADHD organizing specialist, and of course, your go-to gal for all things pro-organizing business. I like to speak organized to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. All right, fam, if you haven't done so already, please take out your device and tap that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever we post new content. As you get value out of today's episode, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to give us a big old thumbs up and tap that notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new content every single week. If you have a ton of questions and you're jonesing for genuine connection to get those questions answered, I encourage you to join my free Facebook group. I will leave that information down in the description of the video and the podcast show notes. If you're an Apple podcast user, you can leave us a rave five-star review. We would so appreciate the opportunity to reach more amazing folks just like you. Don't forget to follow along on social media. All the handles are I Speak Organized. We're very easy to find. The main mission here at I Speak Organized is to give you the best quality tools and resources to level up your business and have a truly successful six or seven figure business that doesn't suck away all of your time. So if you're brand new to all of this and it seems very overwhelming, you don't really know where to start, you have come to the right place. I am your go-to gal for all things pro-organizing business. If you're afraid that you aren't enough, like you don't have enough experience or you don't really have the goods to bring to the table to charge what other people charge or whatever story you happen to be telling yourself, I am here to help you understand that you can be exceptional with the right tools and training. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about how I can help you with that. But in the meantime, let's get into this juicy interview. All right, speaker fam, please join me in welcoming a fellow Tennessean. This is Kylie Wade. She is the owner of Organizing for Life, and I'm really excited to have you on the show. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Excited. Uh, and thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So can you share a little bit about your background? You used to work for Netflix. So how did you go from that to the founder of Organizing for Life? Yeah, such a great question. Um, and I know that there's a lot of side hustlers out there. So I love to sharing what a success story looks like, especially starting as that side hustle and then transitioning into a full-time career mm -hmm. um, and all the benefits along the way of doing it sort of backwards, you know. Um, so how things got started for me goes back to 2020. I had my son, of course, in the middle of the pandemic, we're stuck at home, just like everybody else. We were renovating and, you know, we were finished with the upstairs. I said, could I spend like a thousand dollars on the pretty bins? Not the pick this up at Walmart this week, this one, a couple years ago, can I do it right? Mm -hmm. And so as I did that, I shared it on social media and, and started to get a little bit of a following. So that gave me a little hope over time, started picking up clients on weekends. Yeah, that's, that's very very interesting to me. And it's different than the approach that I usually teach to my coaching clients because building your business digitally, especially in the organization world as a, more of an influencer or content creator is very difficult to do yeah. um, unless you really have that understanding of marketing algorithm and social media marketing, and it can be very difficult. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested to hear a little bit more about that. Um, so obviously your, your mission and approach is very unique. So let's let's unpack that a little bit as you kind of alluded to earlier. So I know that your overall mission is to empower busy working moms just like yourself, just like me. I'm I'm right there in the trenches with you with a four and a five year old. Um so how do you feel that your approach is different from other professional organizers in the industry? Yeah, definitely. Of course, our style in the end makes us all different, but um, even further differentiating myself, I think was that social media approach first. Mm -hmm. um, and what comes or well, a benefit that I've had is I have a PR marketing degree. Um, I will caveat though. Yeah. That was one that was just Twitter on the scene. <laughs> I'm like totally dating myself here, yeah. but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't Instagram and it wasn't this rapidly changing environment that we're seeing these days of different viewing behavior and consumption behavior of our content and, and always having to keep up with those trends in the way that we're creating content. However, I do think that like PR marketing mindset of, you know, I, it's about the audience. It's never about me. What do they need? Um, and just not posting content to post content. And really starting with with that as my foundation, I think was really solid. 
also, you know, I, I heard at a conference a really great approach to it too. And as you're posting to Instagram, it's really a portfolio of your work. Mm -hmm. And so not only did I have that, that awareness of everything I'm doing is not for me. I also had that portfolio, which I reference daily now, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, in consults, what would you like me to tackle a bathroom? Oh my gosh, I just did this great one. And you start to build, you know, that reference of your work. And then people can say, yes, that's great. Or like, okay, I'm not the acrylic bin kind of person, you know, and you can really sort of find those things really quickly. I mean, who, who isn't an acrylic bin kind of person? Very few, right. But, right. you know, you could start to unpack some of those things for sure. Yeah. Whether you're willing to admit it or not, you know, and I have a lot of clients that come to us that don't necessarily understand the power of a good system until they've seen it. And so we always have stuff on hand to bring in and kind of just show them the possibility. Um, if we're not able to use Instagram as a portfolio, that is an absolutely fabulous tip. And I also want to point out just backtracking a little bit that you're not necessarily always using and you didn't build your following using other people's homes. You did it with your own space which is which is an important point to make. A lot of people think, oh, they need to have all of these beautiful before and afters and all these clients and how are they going to build business? Do it in your own home, right? Yes, absolutely. And then you have complete control mm -hmm. um, because of course, when we're working in client homes, they can have a, a diverse range of different things. And, you know, me too, I could have like the different brand, the different colors of Myers and different things because these are the things I stock in my home. Or I could say, I'm going to have more back stock. Not only am I, I sort of doing that for my family, it's making that that picture a lot prettier. But the added benefit that comes with that, it's not it's not just about the picture, it's the decision fatigue of mm -hmm. when you are constantly choosing the same product, you're making it repeatable for yourself. You're able to do subscribe and save and you're just making that mom life just a little bit easier. So I think it's a win-win. And then yes, absolutely use your home. And you know, when, when people reach out to me on Instagram and offer products and they say, do you want to test this? I'm like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'd love to test it before I put it in a client home. You know, sometimes you change it back and you say, you know what, my original system was great. And I like that. And now I sort of know what the differences could look like between them when I'm using those in client homes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then you have that experience to be able to relate it to your clients. Speaking of which, obviously you are a busy mom. Um, I know that your niche is you, you kind of like cater to that demographic um, with your work. So as that busy mom, business owner, what kind of unique insights do you feel like you are able to bring to your clients who are juggling that work and family aspect? Because I know there are people listening and watching that are also um, organizing enthusiasts or there are people that are really trying to tap into maybe that's their niche or their desired target audience. So how do you approach those clients um, and help them with your unique insight? Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, I have to put it out there. Everybody's always afraid of niching down because you don't want to say, well, I'm, I'm not turning down clients by any means. But absolutely, you know, those are the the clients that I feel most comfortable with because I'm like, I know you, I am you, mm -hmm. and I want to solve your problems. Not that I'm always biased towards my solutions, but I'm like, hey, you know, I, I have better questions to ask them around, I can see this. You know, you pick up those little clues around their house. I feel mm -hmm. like this is commonly used. Or I tell them, I'm like, don't clean up for me by any means. I want to see life as it happens, you know, both for the consult and when I come that day. Bonus if it's different both times, if it's different levels of chaos or, or different things in different places, because then you could see sort of the symptoms that are happening to really treat that root cause mm -hmm. um, and not just say, hey, this would look pretty, but like, is this truly functional? Um, so not only do I have that unique perspective of a mom, you know, I have young kids and we try to have a diverse team too. And so across our team, we have moms with teenagers, we have boy moms, girl moms, all, you know, we run the gamut, even, you know, moms with kids in college, moms, with kids out of the house. And so, you know, we always try to tap into those different perspectives of, you know, I'm like three and six, you know, both boys, yeah. you know, so in a girl's room, I am dreaming, but I'm not necessarily as comfortable as I am with dinos and tractors and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just try to bring that perspective and say, all right, you have young kids. We need to make this really easy. Or you have older kids, perhaps they need to have a little more say in what happens. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it really, um, it really plays a lot into the way that I, I shape my conversation conversations and the way they shape the execution of the project. Absolutely. Yeah. And it makes you more relatable, uh, not having everything so perfect and, and being able to change those systems, be flexible, understand their needs. And, and like you said, you're not really turning anybody away if it's a senior 
client or a busy entrepreneur with no kids or whatever, the systems do tend to overlap, but it, I, I am with you in the, in the niching camp. I feel like it's very important and it actually helps your business grow over time if you can really have clear messaging, right? So that's yeah. your PR background for sure. Exactly. And two, one, one other little nugget, cause I always Absolutely. love like anything I can give. Um, so two, in, in pursuing that niche, it, it also will impact so, sort of where you fish for your clients. So Maybe you're the PTA mom who gets involved at the school because you want to get in with those other moms. And so finding those opportunities, finding those Facebook groups and, you know, keeping your eye out too when other moms say, I need a little help here. And then when you encourage your clients to refer others, hey, do you know any other moms? I'm so passionate about this and I want to continue to help them. And so just wanted to throw that out there as well as, you know, as you start to, you know, say, this is my niche, and you start to niche down, maybe that sort of changes the way that you start to look for your work. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it easier in many cases. Really, mm-hmm. I, I truly believe that. Um, so kind of continuing on that train, working with moms, thinking about that, you know, if we're using this as an exercise, really thinking about that niche. Finding balance is a very important thing. I, I once had a guest on the podcast a, a year or two ago, who actually refers to it more so in the uh, sense of harmony versus versus like that mathematical balance of two weighted things because our lives are kind of all over the place. So I like I like the word harmony better. Trying to find those key organizational systems, right? So being organized definitely aids in a more harmonious environment, uh, and we all know that. And whether we whether we realize that or not, we we recognize that. So. What do you recommend, especially for working moms in particular? This is like, I'm totally um, being selfish here as a working mom. I want to know um, what you what you recommend organizing system-wise for maintaining that harmony and balance at home. Yeah, definitely. Um, I am a big, big fan of, you know, incremental progress. And so you'll hear me sort of continue to beat that drum throughout every single <laughs> answer, most likely to... <laughs> Um, to your wonderful questions. And um, I think one one battle that I really had to overcome because of course, as I first had my son, um, it was great. I had a great maternity leave and that's when I really started to build my, my business backwards. <laughs> um, and then from there, um, as I started to return to work, I, I felt like I was like one ailment away from like my life falling apart, you know, and the kids are bringing everything home, especially with it, with a younger you know, newborn at home, it's, it can be really challenging. And so, you know, both, uh, you know, having, having help in every way that you can, Mm -hmm. you know, if that's not family nearby, I have about five babysitters, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, I think we had like one or two and it never failed. Like something would, something would always fall through the cracks because we would schedule them on a Saturday to, to catch up from work by like working on the home on the weekend. So really no break whatsoever. Right. Um, you know, meal prep assistance, you know, a grocery order delivery, pay that tip, have it delivered, do what you can, you know, to utilize the systems you can and get what what help you can. Mm-hmm. Um, I even trained members of my team on um, what we now have as a maintenance uh, offering. And so what that looks like is it's, you know, laundry folding and putting it away. And, you know, I'm an organizer. I have systems in my home that can be followed by others. Things are labeled. Mm -hmm. And um, when you have that set up in your home, and and that's an extra motivation to go ahead and utilize your home as that, you know, that practice ground and as that testing ground and as that Instagram, um, you know, content that you're creating, this is also an added benefit that anybody can come into your systems and work with those. Um, I think one last thing too, that's my biggest nugget of wisdom here is the to-do list will never end. (laughs) True. (laughs) So so true. So make peace with it. Um, the biggest thing is celebrating your accomplishments. You know, I had a, a therapist at one point as I was sort of working through these harder parts of my life who said, um, do this exercise called the little bird exercise. And it's at the end of the day, what would you, you know, if a little bird came down, what would you tell him were your most successful things of the day? And sometimes mm. I, I write that reverse to-do list, you know, when you're just like, I made my bed in the morning. You know, if you ha- if you utilize that hack to having that productive morning, you know, right from the start, mm-hmm. write everything down, celebrate those wins. And what that helped me to start doing is saying, this is enough. Mm-hmm. And um, of course I have, uh, through my corporate work, a large project management background. Um, and so what helps too is not only is that to-do list, you know, keeping it 
more manageable day to day, but also to time blocking is really effective to you to say, today is not the day to go through the mail. That's Friday. Mm -hmm. So there's a day for those things and, you know, and just having sort of a fail safe that way, if it's like we're on vacation this week, so maybe I'm just going to take an extra day as my catch up day after vacation to settle back in and catch up on my, my routines and systems. That way I'm not you know, behind once again, you're sort of staying on top of things in a manageable way. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, the alternative, of course, is just like soul crushing and just burnout, uh, which I, I've I've fought for, you know, years at a time. And so right. now being in this better place, those are some things that I've really, I've really found to be successful. Of course, when you're at your craziest, you'll slip into those bad habits. So just try to reset your your mindset and say, that was working. And I'm back into that like icky place. Mm -hmm. Let me get back into my systems and get back into that rhythm because it does feel really good. Okay, fam, I want to offer you some words of encouragement and a little tip because being a full-time business owner is not for the faint of heart. It comes with a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure and stress at times. Yes, you do get more flexibility, you have more control and freedom, but in order to achieve that, you have to set very specific boundaries and goals for yourself, and you have to be taking care of your physical and mental state. That is the first thing to get tossed out the window. It dawned on me that in order to be successful, I need to get the stress back under control. It's gotten away from me. So I reached out to my friends at Magic Mind and they sent me a case of this mental performance shot. I've been working with this company for a while and I absolutely love them. So I decided to do the seven day Magic Mind challenge. I'm currently on day three. And if you don't know what Magic Mind is, it is, as I said, a mental performance shot and it has nootropics and adaptogens and functional mushroom compounds that are all organically grown in California. This is really high quality, potent stuff that's also 100% safe. It has a time release property with the caffeine in it so that it gives you long lasting energy throughout the day. And what I've noticed with this is it really actually helps mitigate a lot of those feelings of stress. There's L-theanine in here and it just kind of allows me to bring my fractured attention back into focus. So if you're in the same boat and you need a little bit of stress relief like me, I've got a special deal for you as always. You can head to magicmind.com slash speak organized and you can either try a subscription for 48% off for a limited time or you get 20% off your first order using the code speakorganized20. Go ahead and comment down below and let me know how it goes. And always, I wanna give a big shout out and thank you to Magic Mind for sponsoring today's episode. Absolutely. Wow. That you just like in, in the last <laughs> two minutes, you just exploded with amazing <laughs> tips and insights. I love that. It's just like, it was, there were so many good reminders for me and times in my life. And I think a few things that I would like to highlight and point out, um, the, the little bird exercise, I used to do something very similar called 10,000 little moments where you just think of all, like there's, for every one bad moment, there are 10,000 little things in your day that are often overlooked, the mundane things that you really can elevate and celebrate, um, like taking a hot shower, like things we really take for granted. And so I love um, I love that visual of the little bird and, and what you would say to them if they came to visit you. Um, I think that's so cool. And also just the, the fact that we need to give ourselves grace and understand that our systems will slide the to-do list will never go away. We're never fully going to get on top of it. And even us as business owners, I mean, those of us who are organized, it doesn't mean that we don't struggle with those things because you may be really well organized in your home, but your business may be just an absolute, uh, like burning the candle at both ends situation. And you, and we need these reminders too. And so it's important to think of those times where you will slip back into those bad habits. I do it all the time. Um, and they start to start to experience that burnout. And then, you know, it's time to trigger a better, healthier way to handle it. So I just, oh, yes. <laughs> Kylie, I'm so happy that you just brought all this up. It just, it gives me goosebumps and makes me smile. Cause it just is, it's a good reminder for me. It's a good reminder for everybody. Um, so yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna lead me into my next question here. And this is an important one. And this is kind of what the basis of today's conversation really is about. I think a lot of people are going to be very curious about your answer to this question in particular. Mm -hmm. 
because people are starting a side hustle in the organizing industry. A lot of people come from that corporate background or they were teachers or, you know, they're leaving some sort of uh, W-2 position and becoming an entrepreneur for the first time. That's the majority of my audience, right? And so it's a very scary thing. Some people kind of like, you know, dip their toes in and it's a, it's a side hustle. So please, if you would not mind sharing some tips on how you managed I'm assuming you balanced a full-time job at one point with this while growing your professional business, or maybe it was maternity leave or whatever, because that's beyond a full-time job. Like, let's be real. So um, can you just share some tips with us on, on how you were able to do that and eventually turn this into your full-time gig? Yeah, certainly. And this is what I love talking about most. Um, I think the biggest thing I did, of course, and so I had about, um, I was I was very lucky at about a 10 month maternity leave. So I did have a great ramp up to start building things and, and getting in little routines with the way that I was working. Um, from there, of course, adding back in a full time job onboarding, I came into a new organization because, you know, when I left for maternity leave, I said, you know, don't tell me if there's a reorg, tell me when there's going to be a reorg. So I came back into the IT portion of Netflix, which was, which was great. But also I'm learning things, you know, brand new um, that I had never done before, which is totally fine. Um, you know, but a lot of, a lot of the teams I was familiar with also came. So there was some comfort there, but still, and then I, I had that like OCD, I'm going to prove myself mindset at all times. Um, and so, definitely just did nothing but work endlessly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I won't glorify it, you know, by any means, a lot of patience and grace from my husband. Um, and, uh, I, I won't say I was the best wife by any means during that time, but, um, but I was of course providing a good living, which allowed me to do certain, you know, make certain investments in my business. And so mm -hmm. that's certainly something that I would encourage. Um, is it your time investment in taking clients on the weekends or, or maybe you're popping over and doing little projects for friends or family members just to learn and get well-versed in, in different products and bins and, in refining your process early mm -hmm. um, before you hit that full-time mark. And so I did my website, I did my branding. Um, I made financial investments that I knew I wouldn't have money for once, once I took that leap for a bit. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, now that I'm working in homes full-time, there's still things, there's, there's workflows and processes that, you know, I'm, I'm nudging my other organizer friends. And I'm like, Hey, um, you know, your client intake, what questions are you asking? I really want to refine and get better at the way that I'm doing that. Um, but these are things that you could really put a little more time to before you're working a full day, at, you know, in someone's home. And then mm -hmm. you're in the morning or in the evening doing your admin, your bookkeeping, all of the different things. Um, I think, you know, those investments, of course, were wonderful. Um, because per my bookkeeper, you know, mm -hmm. she was like, you, you are now, you are now just fully growing. You know, I, I was able to say, I'm going from a loss in my business to nothing but growth because mm -hmm. I wasn't waiting for the money to come and then saying, now let's do branding and let's sort of create that brand vision and identity that people know and they'll come back to, mm -hmm. um, you know, also to Google reviews. I started building those early with friends, family members. And so that's a really great time to say, let me boost that SEO for my, my business. Let me sort of get on the map before I'm truly on the map. And that really helped, um, my biggest piece. Of course, I always like build up to my biggest tip, mm -hmm. um, the value of my time uh, was the biggest thing, you know, I would, I would say to myself so, so often, um, I'm either losing sleep or I'm losing time with my family. Mm -hmm. And so that helped me charge more for my services and gain that confidence without saying I'm nervous about losing clients. And so I think that money mindset that that established for me has been really critical, especially now that I've taken on a business partner um, since I've gone full-time end of January this year. So mm. still very newly full-time in business. Um, and I very quickly jumped into a, a partnership just because she was a longtime family friend of my husband and we really hit it off, um, you know, and, and started testing each other, uh, you know, on different projects and just found such this, you know, great marriage of our skills and, and talents. And so, um, we did that, but I sort of have to nudge sometimes with the money mindset. And I, I really, really attribute this to, I validated that pricing mm -hmm. while I didn't care, you right. know, while I, I was like, what, you know, what does it matter if somebody says no, because I still have income for my family. 
Right. Absolutely. Wow. That's, that's really well said. And I think that's very encouraging because I I've had other guests on the podcast before where the advice is very different and they say, you know, just use your savings and jump all in and you got to be hundred percent hitting the ground running. And, and that's an approach for sure. But you brought up a lot of really great valid points that, um, that cater to people who have a different risk tolerance. And I think that's super important. Um, I love the fact that you are weighing your pros and cons and, and raising your prices early so that you can work less hours, but still make more money. Um, and there are people out there willing to pay what, what they need to invest in the right systems and, and all these different things that do, that do take a bit more of an investment on their end. So, uh, they're out there, believe you me, <laughs> yeah. as you know, as you know. Um, so, and there was something else that you brought up that I wanted, that leads me into my next question here. Um, tailoring organizing solutions to your clients. So obviously not every client that you're working with is going to be a busy mom. And you mentioned in this last segment here that you're always kind of working towards gaining more knowledge in the industry. You brought your business partner on. I'm sure you tap her for tons of advice. I know you tap other people in like my Facebook group, uh, organizer yeah. think tank, all the other Facebook groups. Um, so what are some other strategies that you use to help personalize your solutions to your clients and really make sure that you are staying up to date essentially on everything? Yeah, I think one of the biggest pieces of advice um, for me and my project management hat that I often put on, I mean, what we do is it's project management is our bread and butter, whether we realize it or not. Mm -hmm. um, it's a continuous improvement framework mm -hmm. and that mindset of how do I get better and better? you really have to capture your process to do that. So write it down. Um, even keep like a notepad on your phone and saying like, okay, I made this assumption before with clients and it worked, but this one had a great question or it, or it sort of gave me a moment of pause and rethink my strategy on this or, you know, different things like that, that you learn job by job, keep a notepad that says, you know, or maybe you need to add this into your employee handbook. Cause I know that that can happen a lot as well of like, oh, the way that we greet or, or work with clients, that's different organizer to organizer and what they prefer, you know, for themselves, for their assistant organizers, different things like that. You'll hear different approaches. And I absolutely love the wisdom in those groups, you know, and, and pulling those together. The same thing. I bookmark those threads and I watch them for weeks. And mm -hmm. I say like, okay, I don't want to forget this because I asked this question. I want to come back. And so you capture those answers. Um, and just like everything in our clients' homes needs to have a home, you know, whether that's a bin or some other, you know, storage mechanism, think about that in the way that you're capturing your processes in your business. Mm -hmm. Everything needs to have a home. So maybe you have like, I literally have a note that's called note vomit on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, then I go through on my admin days and I turn that note vomit into actionable things. And I say, mm -hmm. this goes here and this goes here, or maybe it's a to-do item, you know, where I'm like, hey, that, you know, I need to change this. I need to like, you know, do something simple, like change my voicemail on my phone, things mm -hmm. like that. You know, when you're in the moment and you're really thinking about it because you're in that environment, that's the best time to capture those notes. But of course, in, in a, a frictionless way, like a quick Siri, I have to, you know, whatever I'm waiting on her to like, talk to me. Oh, <laughs> I know. Just, like, what do you need? When, when you say the S name or the, the A-L-E-X-A name, you know, uh -huh. something comes to life technology wise around you. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I think that's that's really what it is, is it's that continuous process improvement framework. And then, you know, being able to say, let me make this actionable by refining my processes, by updating my handbook. That way, my employees are on board in the way that we're changing the way that we do our work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that just that allows you to grow, obviously, as you <laughs> as you pointed out, because if you don't have an SOP or standard operating procedure, how are you going to be able to hand that off to somebody else and have it represent your business? You know, I love, I love, I love this conversation and just thinking about all the different ways of building sustainable, healthy businesses that we can, that we can grow and, and support ourselves and our family for years and years to come. I mean, that's really what the, the Speak Organized podcast is all about. So this, this is a fantastic conversation. Okay. Pop quiz time. How would you feel six months from now, if you were sitting in this exact same spot, sipping on your favorite beverage, running your own professional organizing business 
and it was booked out with amazing clients that get you excited to get out of bed in the morning. How would that make you feel? But let me guess, there is something holding you back, right? Like that voice of imposter syndrome that whispers, who am I to do this? Well, let me tell you, I have been there and it is not only possible to overcome those fears, it's essential because your future clients need somebody exactly like you. And remember that I am here to help you with proven tools and strategies to get you where you wanna be in this industry if you're willing to follow my lead. My brand new mini course from Overlooked to Overbooked is designed to help you overcome your imposter syndrome, turn your website into a client magnet with SEO strategies that actually work, skyrocket your social media presence without that uncomfortable buy my stuff energy, and confidently network like a pro, all while building genuine connections that feel as natural as making friends. It's all self-paced and comes with a workbook full of done-for-you scripts and templates that are proven to generate leads, help you sound confident, and convert all of that into cash in your wallet. So don't let another moment pass you by to become the business owner that your future clients need. You're only one decision away from becoming booked, busy, and well-equipped to crush it in the professional organizing industry. We are kind of jumping around back and forth a little bit. Um, so I'm going to kind of jump back into the impact about organizing. If you were to think about the impact of organizing, share with us a story of some kind or a little anecdote that uh, where, your where your organizational expertise has made a significant impact on your business in client's life or, uh, or in the growth of your business. Yes, I love this question so, so much. And oh gosh, I, it's hard to pick my favorite because there's so, so many ways that we transform lives that it, sometimes we don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the ways we can have so much impact, but, you know, often we're getting people off couches and back into their bedrooms. We're helping them reclaim spaces or hobbies, mm -hmm. um, which is so fantastic. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I love hoarders mm -hmm. <laughs> because I feel like that's the biggest opportunity to transform when they're ready to change. And so right. we, we, of course, are are mindful of sort of the watch outs there of when trained professionals need to be there versus times when, you know, we're like, hey, let's do a test day. Let's see how you're feeling. It seems like you're really ready to do this, but but let's let's truly see where we could, you know, where we can handle this without completely overwhelming you. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think one of my favorite stories uh, is I came into a project at my husband's uh, grandmother's house mm -hmm. and uh, she had, and, and of course, as a tenancy, you will understand this. Um, she had an old wash house, um, also known as a wash house, uh -huh. uh, where um, <laughs> they had converted it, of course, over the years as, you know, plumbing moved indoors and different things into a paint studio for herself. Well, when she lost her husband, um, it was sort of time to give her back those things that really meant a lot to her to, to really help her get through this hard time. Mm -hmm. So I loved it. We took the opportunity to go in and sort of revamp, um, revamp that studio for her. And it's still one of my absolute favorite projects. We renovated our home on our own. And so um, I loved having a renovation component to uh, the organization. And then I, you know, view organization as creative problem solving. And so for me, I get to just go into my zone as well. But I mean, I painted many, many, many layers of things because a cork board could soak up quite a bit of paint. Um, oh, and yeah. so we had, she had a lot of pegboard walls, so much possibility, right? So that was just, it was amazing what I was able to do. Crafts, I love crafts because the colors they bring into a space, the creativity. And so, so much of it just lit me up. And then, you know, her, like her reaction when we revealed it, I still reference that and I repost it frequently because it's such a special thing to me. Um, you know, also too, just so many clients become, you know, apart from that project, become our friends. And mm -hmm. so I just feel like I'm, I'm slowly building more and more of my community here in Tennessee, which is absolutely wonderful. It feels like I just have so much more family here as we move from client to client and complete each project. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's beautifully said. And, and you really do get to know your clients on uh, a level that maybe even some of their family members don't because they allow us mm -hmm. to see these spaces that nobody has ever seen in some cases. Um, for a long time, including themselves. So it really is, it's a, it's a special, it's a very special industry. It's a special mission that we have as organizers to help those people in our community. I know that you, you guys do a lot of community outreach. You partner with charities. We can talk about that a little bit. I don't have that in my notes, but I'm, I'm like going real off script here. 
Um, so some of the things that you mentioned, you know, obviously there's challenges with getting organized. There is trauma that, that becomes uncovered in a lot of cases. Um, there is a tremendous emotional impact to our work as well as the physical impact. Um, and there's a lot of joy in that efficiency. There's a lot of joy in creating those tranquil spaces. So if we're going to combine all those ideas and kind of think about that and how important it is what we do for our clients, what are, what are just some simple tips for those people that maybe want to get started on this journey or um, for anybody listening or watching that gets that question, like, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't even know where to start. What is your advice to to remember how important all of this is, the outcome that it's going to produce, uh, how do we do that? How do we get started in creating those joyful, tranquil spaces? Yeah, definitely. I think as I, as I teased before, I'll continue to beat that incremental progress drum. Mm -hmm. I feel like time goes so fast. You know, you're just like, oh my gosh, how is it like almost the end of June right now? Mm -hmm. You know, or like, you know, Christmas decorations are coming out and you're just like, you're always just so reminded by how quickly time goes. Well, I think, you know, we should view the things that we do in our homes and in our clients' home in that way too, is especially too, when we're in a space um, that can get overwhelming, right? Just focus on the next, you know, that that next right thing. If anybody's like a Frozen 2 fan, right? Um, we're yeah. on as like next right thing, you know, so what's that next right thing? Um, you know, the space can be overwhelming as a whole, but what if, you know, what if you just do one thing a day? So my garage, my garage is my biggest challenge, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and especially many organizers starting out, you may, you may be solving for inventory there. Um, it may be super chaotic. Um, your car can get pretty chaotic, different things. But, um, you know, I say do your best to maintain, but also, and, and maintaining is progress because mm -hmm. we didn't go backwards, right? Um, but other than that, is there something you walk past every day that you could just grab one thing and say, well, let me just tackle this, this, this one bit here, mm -hmm. um, creating, you know, maybe some project bins for yourself or for clients and saying like memories are tougher and longer projects, but how can I, I put it in a nice little package? So it's ready for you when you're ready for it. Mm. So trying to is, you know, as much as you can making that incremental progress or making the problems a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Um, that's of course also something in project management, you're just like, how can I, how can I make this less scary? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and even established organizers, you'll find those points in the projects where, you know, today we were joking, we're like, we're all, we're all circling, we're like sharks, right? You're just looking for that next thing that sort of makes sense to, to sort of catapult your momentum again. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so just look for that next thing until you just start hitting your stride again. And you certainly will, you'll get to a point where you're in at the exciting parts of projects and you're mm -hmm. like, okay, here we are. Um, so just keep doing that next right thing until you catch that momentum, or maybe it's a month down the road and you're like, wow, this, this has been great. Mm -hmm. You know, I did these little things here and there. And often, you know, a lot of us will run little declutter challenges or different things because we just want to nudge, you know, progress in that direction and say like, let me just give you a thought starter for today to get you going. I think those are all very powerful in saying what could progress look like today? And it doesn't have to be massive because, you know, moms always have what I joke as like fragments of free time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I joked with my newborn, I was just like, I need it like a list that's like in case of five minutes, you know, <laughs> where you're just, yeah. like, these are the things that are on my list. And so then you could be like, all right, let me just tackle this real fast. And so um, in those fragments of free time, what's something that could feel fulfilling? You know, it's maybe you're, you're clearing a stairway or doing different things. Of course, you live with these tiny little beings that you created that are undoing everything that you've done. Right. <laughs> of course. Um, but, um, but you know, there's, there's systems for that as well. But I just think just keep one foot in front of the other one thing at a time. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the way your brain works and all these little examples <laughs> that you bring to the table with that project management background. It's just like, it's, it's nice to listen to. And this is like a very awkward comment that I'm going to make, but your voice is so soothing. And it's just like, I could, <laughs> I could listen to you talk about this for, for like an uncomfortably long period of time. Cause it just, it feels really nice the way that you present the information. And I know a lot of people listening and watching are going to feel the same way too. So um, to wrap up, I you've got a lot going on with your business. I want to hear what some of your future plans are. Yeah, so many things. I dream so, so big. Um, so it's hard because uh, I'm constantly wanting to do sort of the next thing and get it going. I think, you know, taking on a partnership has been huge. And, and I certainly sort of slowed down and took time for that because I also... 
um, it was really funny. She and I both had had separately before we came together had these moments of we had these clients and these really big projects. And I was like, I will be in this home forever if I do not hire somebody. <laughs> and, you know, while I'm happy to help and I'm happy for the the work, it was still something where I'm like, it re really opened my mind to I need a team because this is really physical work. <laughs> and I'm starting this sort of sort of later. This isn't like my first career. And so, you know, I just know that. And I know that at the end of a week, if we've been working five days with long hours, because often too, you know, we're, we're hitting milestones before we leave a house. We don't want to just be like, well, that's eight hours or, you know, seven or six, whatever it may be for your day. You know, we're just like, let me just sort of clear this path or get this theme sort of done. And uh, those that can mean long days or hard work where you're just like you you've got the gas pedal down, and um, and so I think sort of realizing that and taking the time to let things bake in in my business has been really critical, mm. you know. So I I took on this partnership and and it's been working out really beautifully. And so I was really open and honest with her from the beginning. I was like, hey, here you know, there's a couple things going on. So I have the social media revenue stream where we're partnering with brands. Um, I want to keep that active, but it has been, it has sort of put me underwater in certain times, or it's the first thing to be neglected. Mm -hmm. um, she had somebody, so we've, we've been training up a social media manager. That's been an equalizer, which has been really good because, you know, different things that I, I sort of carried as far as expertise, mm -hmm. you know, could, could sort of at, at times swing the pendulum either way. Maybe she's working longer hours in home while I'm at home doing administrative or different things. So we, we sort of sought those opportunities to have those equalizers to say, this is a pretty daunting thing to like create Instagram reels. Like let's, let's sort of outsource that, but keep the creativity and strategy in, in our wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. So those are some things we did. And then also too, I, I mentioned at the top of this call, and thank you so much for, you know, sort of noting too, that the way that I present ideas, um, mm -hmm. I think I'm a little more succinct in my answers after doing my TED talk last week. Yeah. <laughs> where I really had to trim a lot of like, I guess, fat or filler words because I was memorizing a 10 minute speech. And so that's top of mind and really saying, how can I be succinct in the way that I'm answering, but yeah. also to that val value delivery to my audience. And so next steps for me, of course, now that that TED talks behind me is going into courses and coaching. Of course, there's a lot that comes with that, that I have neglected, you know, getting back to that email list. So I'm not just always a victim of the algorithm, you know, while I try to catch up on the trends and taking that communication into my own hands um, on reaching my audience that has expressed interest. Um, and so I'm super excited for that. That really plays into my training program manager background uh, that I had at Netflix within that role where I did create courses. So I created a course, bef you know, before I, I transitioned roles out of the IT organization to change the way we worked as an mm -hmm. IT organization, reset our mindset and sort of change our uh, standardized ways of working in, in the way that we think about them. So I'm super excited too to bring those same skills to um, coursework and of course, coaching through them to get a lot of feedback mm -hmm. uh, during the process and not just assuming like, I'm the expert, here you go. Um, so I really am super excited for that community aspect of it as well. So that will be coming um, of course, that was only last week that I really was like, my brain gets to think about other things. Yeah. And so um, starting to dive into that. In the meantime, definitely would love to encourage listeners to find me on Instagram, which is my my bread and butter, I'll always say. Mm -hmm. um, I promote that ahead of my website a lot of times, but um, organizing for life on Instagram. And uh, for this audience in particular, I wanted to be able to give something back right away. Mm -hmm. um, and so while I haven't launched that course yet, while you play along, um, you can go to my Instagram uh, bio and I have the link in bio, of course, and I have a mastering meal prep freebie. Mm -hmm. I'll give just like a very short intro to, to how that came about. As I was posting pictures on Instagram of my home and starting to build, build things as I initially started this endeavor, I joked, I was like, I will never show my fridge. It is horrendous. Um, I like, I don't think that will ever be organized enough for me to show it. What blew me up was my uh, fridge glamour shots, as I now call them. Um, and so I was starting to meal prep my way into getting ahead, you know, with with my family and saying like, hey, I did this on Sunday and we're ready for our week because I am I will not eat unless I have food ready to go. Yep. So just sort of understanding that that's the way that I live my life, having that ready, benefiting my family blowing me up on Instagram, uh, my fridge posts sort of became that thing that I was known for initially. And so my mastering meal prep freebie sort of walks you through the different systems and the way you could think about systemizing your meal prep. 
So you can start to create a strategy around the way that you do it, the way that you plan. So like theming your days of the week, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like, it's so funny. I don't know. You've probably seen that joke out there. That's like parents doing pizza on Fridays. Like now as an adult, you understand why that happened. Yes. It sort of reduces that decision fatigue. And then like on a Friday, you're like, oh, let's just, let's just order a pizza. It's planned. So, yeah. Yeah. How can you simplify things? Take that decision fatigue out. You know, maybe you have a pasta night, different things. And so go to, you know, my Instagram bio, of course, you'll send it for my email list. And as a thank you, you'll get that, that freebie. Um, I think that's something that I could give now, but definitely the sky's the limit. And so, um, you know, I am being careful about what I take on, but being very ambitious at the same time. So as the bandwidth allows, and as I have the partnership that allows me to diversify my revenue stream without the detriment of one while I look the other way, you right. know, I am able to do that. And so that's something that I'm super excited for and just keep an eye out because, you know, I think the home edit's really shown us a great version of what success could look like in our industry. Mm-hmm. I call them out as one of the, you know, of course the top ones, there's so many that are doing it so well. So, right. you know, see that in other organizers and, and, and take what you want, leave the rest, right. Just mm-hmm. like we're all learning and, and just drinking from the fire hose as we, as we sort of start this process and we're starting to figure out what it looks like for us and what's achievable. And, um, you know, what works for you is great. Test it. Nah. <laughs> you yeah. know, there, there may be many of those things along the way, but that's certainly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on those pros and saying, this is fantastic, but also to learning from those wonderful communities like yours and saying, Hey, you all have some diverse perspectives here, which are so beautiful. What can I learn from you? And then what can I give back to? Mm-hmm. Cause I'm so grateful for the knowledge that they've given me. Mm-hmm. Wow. That yes. I just, ah, oh, it flows so nicely, Kylie. So good. <laughs> Great advice there. I'm really excited. If if I had to give my two cents and advice to listeners and watchers today, I would say definitely get into Kylie's wheel, get into her world, you know, like see what she's got coming down the pipe. Cause I think you've got a lot of really wonderful assets to offer to the organizing community and to organizing enthusiasts, people who are really trying to streamline those systems. I mean, you clearly have a knack for that just from this very short conversation that's extremely apparent. So I want to end with a fun question. I, I'm starting to like channel my inner James Lipton a little bit, you know, with with these interviews because it, it, we're here to have fun and, and have a good time. So here's my question for you to wrap up. If you could organize the home of any fictional character, who would it be and why? My goodness, this is, I, I literally, like when I was, I was sort of looking at the questions as a preview, I was like, my, this is the hardest one for my brain. So I think we're <laughs> ending very appropriately with me just like cutting down all the value that I just gave. Gosh, maybe I'll just, I'll just throw out a total wild card um, yeah. because I just adore, absolutely adore this to, to death is, um, you know, the movie Up. Absolutely. And, um, his home, I think is so cute because it's such a, like a center of, of the household. And, you know, you're also thinking systems in terms of like a talking dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I think that one would possibly be really fun, especially to see if the reveal included them both. <laughs> the the adorable little old man and then the, you know, just completely candid speaking dog. I think that yeah. would be a fun one. And so that was really a stretch for my brain, but I think I pulled it off just maybe to, uh, to keep y'all thinking that I'm a cool cat. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think that's perfect. I love that movie. And it's it's one of the only movies that I can think of it where I'm in tears within like the first minute and a half of the movie. Um, my kids love that too. So now I'm, I'm just like, my brain is just all over that, trying to think of how Kylie's going to organize that space, <laughs> especially for the dog, you know, having that sort of human sentient uh, personality. <laughs> love it that's great i think that's a perfect answer it's a great way to wrap up um kylie i just want to thank you so much for coming on the show today it was an absolute pleasure and i just again want to encourage everybody to um you know connect with you on instagram and and be a part of your world because i think you're awesome and i'm happy to have you here yes thank you so much it was an absolute pleasure to be here all right fam that's gonna wrap it up as always thank you for coming and spending a little bit of time with me in your day to join the speak organized podcast i hope you got tons of value out of today's episode like i said i really think this was one of my absolute favorites of 2024 so go back re-watch re-listen and glean those nuggets of wisdom from kylie she's so awesome be sure to connect with her on instagram to see what she's got going on coming down the pipe don't forget to join my free facebook 
Facebook group. If you're interested in getting your calendar overbooked with your dream clients, remember you get that discount code to join my Overlooked to Overbooked course. I would love to have you in there as well as my Pro Organizer Forms Pack. You can go ahead and pick that up using the same code YTPRO8 at checkout. And again, a huge thank you to our sponsor for sponsoring the channel and today's episode. Be sure to check them out. And beyond that, I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.